Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. It is with unsurpassed pride that I stand here in this place to table and speak on behalf of my communities on this 16,000 plus signature petition, the very last of the 57th Parliament. And what more appropriate subject to be debating for the current and future safety and prosperity for the people of rural and regional New South Wales than this. For without high quality primary health care services, we have nothing. And sadly for our region and many parts of the state, we're staring down the barrel of that sad reality unless something changes and changes dramatically and changes now. And it's this concern, this frustration, this despair and anger in our region which has brought us to this point here in this debate today. Now I want to acknowledge in the gallery today the collective leadership of our region. Mayors and Deputy Mayors of the Northern Tablelands and beyond. Uh, Walker, Eric Noakes, Urala, Bob Crouch, Armidale Region, Sam Copeland, Glenina Seven, Rob Bannerman, and Troy Arundale, Inverell Shire, Paul Harmon, and from just outside the Northern Tablelands, Tamworth Region, Russell Webb, Liverpool Plains, Doug Hawkins, OAM, and Gunnedah Shire, Jamie Chaffee. I note the mayors of Gwida Shire, John Colton, and Moree Plains Shire, Mark Johnson, are both unable to be here today, representing the collective uh, civic leadership of our region, but I know that they are watching this debate right now online. I thank all of them for their leadership in supporting the tilt to improve health services in our region because they know, as well as I do, that, cr that uh, how crucial good health services are to the people that they serve and lead. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, we're here today in the field of battle to literally fight for better health care services and lives. We have the region's civic leaders here with an army of more than 16,000 people at our back, the signatories to this petition. And the real question is, will the government and the opposition be joining us on the field or will we be taking them on today? Now, I cannot thank enough, sincerely, the people of the Northern Tablelands who have signed this petition and who are still signing this petition and voicing their concerns as late, of today, late as today. Because one thing is for sure, through this petition, our region has declared loudly uh, and unequivocally that we will not accept the continuing trend of re reduction in health services in our region. We won't accept our hospitals continually being put on bypass to send patients to, to Armidale and to Tamworth hospitals that are now struggling with the extra burden of patients, patients that should be treated and have a right to expect to be treated in their own local towns because they always used to. I want to thank uh, the Maria Hitchcock OAM from New England Visions 2030 uh, and also the Nurses and Midwives Association branches across the Northern Tablelands, particularly the Armidale branch led by Michelle Trappel and Secretary Warren Isaac for their strong support of this issue. This petition does not represent a broadside uh, at government, and it doesn't represent a giant whinge fest. We have put together in this position collectively three very practical and very tangible solutions which are able to be implemented right now to help arrest uh, the decline uh, in services that we've been seeing the last few years, because our communities are sick and tired of, of the same thing being done with the expectation of a different result because that is not going to help our people. The first point that is in this petition is about splitting the Hunter New England Health District, a district that currently services 25 local government areas, over 950,000 people. And it is the only health di district in the state that tries to deliver rural and remote services from a metropolitan base. We in our part of the world, at the very end of the line, over 500 kilometres away from the mandarins in Newcastle, uh, are are sick and tired of decisions being made centrally in a metropolitan location without respect for the needs, the individual needs of rural and remote communities that are very different to Newcastle. But the most important part, uh, if that wasn't important enough, is actually employing doctors again in our local hospitals. The VMO, the locum model, the mercenary culture of general practice is failing our communities. We don't have the stock of GPs that we used to have. 
and we want to see those doctors employed again in our local hospitals. And I'm very pleased that the Minister for Regional Health, Bronnie Taylor, has written to the Commonwealth Government as a result of this petition, asking the Commonwealth to grant exemptions so that we can directly employ general practitioners in our hospitals and not rely on the local model, on the failed uh, VMO model. It does not work. It is not fit for purpose. Again, Madam Deputy Speaker, I thank all the petitioners for their support, and I look forward to the contribution of members uh, in the House today. The question is that the House take note of the petition. I call the member for Lismore. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I want to thank the Honourable Member for the Northern Tablelands for bringing this petition to the floor of the Parliament. And I note that the issues raised in the petition are issues showing the deep concern of people um, in the north, in the rural areas, and also in the area of Tenterfield. Um, the Lismore electorate that I represent Tenderfield's in it, and Tenderfield is part of the same health district, the Hunter New England. And just to put it simply, um, Hunter New England is just too far away, too big to be able to service the health needs of the rural areas. And I understand why so many people signed this petition. Um, I've had the discussions in the Tenerfield community where they say, um, and I think it was the joint organisations of councils actually passed a motion um, saying that they wanted this to happen. And in Tenerfield, people have said, we want to go somewhere um, other than Hunter New England. And some of them have said they want to come to Northern New South Wales, local health district, which is the other part of the Lismore electorate I represent. And I said to them in the beginning, let's try and work it out so that we get the health services that are needed there before we look at moving. But that option's becoming far and far more attractive to um, everyone, and particularly in the Tenderfield area. Um, two points in the petition. One is about having more, um, I think, salaried doctors, um, medical specialists in the hospital. We all want that. That's something we want. We desperately need it in uh, rural areas. When I came into this role as a member for Lismore, it was 2019, I was actually really quite shocked to find that there were no VMOs at Tenderfield Hospital. And that surprised me. I mean, this is a hospital that services um, a reasonable sized community. Um, it's on major, there's major highways around it. It's a farming community, forestry, lots of various accidents. And I was really surprised. And I have to say, I did work with the mayor at the time, um, Peter Petty and the deputy mayor, and now with Bronwyn Petrie, the mayor, and Greg Sawyer, the, you know, who is the deputy. We've worked constructively with um, the Hunter New England to try and get the best deal. And um, despite, I got a nurse return that was taken away, and that was the CE of Hunter New England. I didn't know him at the time. I rang him and I said, look, just, on a humanitarian level, you may not know this, but one of the nurses was removed, and can you please put them back? Everybody's been through bushfires, they've been through a whole lot of trauma at the time, and I said, they just can't cop this. He did that, and so we've got three by two by two, but we need three by three by three in those smaller hospitals to make it um, work and to make people have the service that they need. Anyway, I then work with RAMS and the health district to get doctors into the hospital and happy to do that because happy to broker it, but I thought the health service should have done that before mm -hmm. I had to step into the breach and make sure that that happened. And also one of the big issues, and I have to say we did meet with the health minister who's sitting over here a couple of times. He lent his good offices to Tenderfield at the time to help us. He even turned up there um, unannounced and the nurse told me, she said, someone's saying they're Brad Hazard down here and wants to come in. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
<laughs> they worked out it was the health minister. They did let him in. <laughs> they did. The new regional yeah. health minister would do that. Yeah, so that happened. So what I'm saying is it's just not working with Hunter New England. One of the big issues, it's a border community. Tenderfield, like a lot of the places the Honourable Member for Northern Tablelands represents, it's a border community. Unless you live in them, you don't understand. The Member for Tweed's nodding there. <laughs> we know well. Um, and a border community, they want to go over the border to Stanthorpe, to Toowoomba, to the Gold Coast, or come down to Lismore, despite everyone telling them, even the CE, even the minister, everybody saying, that can happen, there's no barrier, it still doesn't happen. It still does not happen. And it is just so frustrating. I do want to, in my last five seconds, note the Legislative Council report on rural and regional health and all of the findings, and we need to take note of them. Thank you. Thank the member for Lismore. The question is that the House take note of the petition, and I call the member for the Upper Hunter. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, can I commend the member for Northern Tablelands for uh, bringing this petition today and, of course, uh, commend all those people who have signed uh, this petition because uh, if there's one thing we know, it's that uh, our health system, regional health, is extremely important to us all. Um, and us living in the regions, um, probably one of the, the number one uh, issue that we face going forward in our communities. And uh, I can certainly um, understand uh, you know, the frustration of people. And I think that's, this petition today has been brought forward out of frustration of people. Um, you know, it is, they are concerned about uh, the health system and they're looking Order. at how uh, you know, the, the whole system is being set up. And of course, we've got Hunter New England and certainly it is a very large LHD and, and perhaps you know, the, the beast has got too big. It's, it's certainly a huge LHD and we Order. need to be able to look at what is the best way to manage this huge uh, enormous area. So I do support a review to have a look at the structure, but I do fear that uh, the frustration of people um, with the health system uh, comes from other causes and uh, is something that uh, is coming through the lack of GPs uh, that we have, the VMO system that we use in our hospitals. Um, if we could all just get and see a, a GP, um, I believe the load on our hospitals would be reduced if we could actually get our local GPs to work in our hospitals through the VMO system, uh, then we wouldn't be in a, in a situation where we're sending people uh, on to the next hospital. And I, you know, there's no doubt, without those GPs willing in the, uh, to work in the hospital, uh, it, is, uh, you know, it puts a lot of pressure on the staff who are there. Um, and of course, we're seeing those aged care centres uh, without good GP access, uh, they're being brought in. To the hospital. So we're seeing this enormous pressure on our hospitals that, um, that we haven't really seen before because the VMO system um, is certainly looking like it's broken. And of course, uh, you know, one of the things that I discovered um, uh, becoming a local MP is of course the federal government's involvement through primary health care and their responsibilities for the GP. So uh, uh, we've got a change of government. They started off uh, very badly in my mind by changing the DPA system, by spreading that system out so that uh, GPs uh, we're, that we're competing for, for foreign uh, trained GPs coming into the country. Of course, now that the DPA system spread out to Lake Macquarie and the coastal areas, so now we're trying to get them back to the country areas. Member for so, Moss, you know, Paul it's Stephen a, Jordy it's on a competitive balls. field, so that was a bad start uh, from that. But I am uh, told and I actually uh, uh, have been told by the uh, Minister of Health that uh, the relationship and the uh, goodwill of the current uh, Labor federal government towards solving the GP uh, problem is getting a lot better. And, and so I commend them for that. And I think they've made an excellent move by uh, doing the hex debt pay um, payoffs and um, making sure that those who work in regional areas, GPs, uh, will have their debt paid off. The second uh, issue, of course, is the workforce, and, uh, and if we can get those GPs, um, then we know that we need to be able to expand our workforce and be able to attract nurses up to all our hospitals. Um, so, you know, I think that is Order. another key issue. But, of course, we can only do that if we manage to get uh, those GPs uh, working 
uh, up in uh, in the regional areas. So look, I think uh, you know it's important that uh, we're looking at the solutions. I certainly am uh, I'm glad that uh, we as a government are looking at the challenges that we have in the, in the healthcare system, and we are certainly the best placed um, to try to deal with those uh, solutions, especially when we're faced with. Uh, an opposition that Order. has no ideas, uh, have no policy, and I can guarantee the people of the heart of New England Order. there will be no Order. ideas Order. from Never the people Police opposite. More. On the other Never hand, Police some, more, some fantastic call. ideas from our wonderful uh, Minister for Regional Health, Bronnie Taylor, and she has brought some great policies to the table uh, with the uh, 10,000 additional Order. workforce that she's bringing in, the increased numbers of nurse practitioners, excellent policy, 883 million in additional regional incentives, increased patient transport, increased pharmacy services scope of works, that was an excellent policy this week, and of course the IPTAS, which is one of my favourites, looking at, and of course looking at the new models. I encourage her to keep going Order. on that policy. Order. Before I call the member for Ballina, I'll just remind there are a number of members on the opposition benches who are already on three calls. I really don't want to kick you out in the last petition debate. I call the member for Ballina and she will be heard in silence. You have Thank the call, member for Ballina. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I rise to contribute on behalf of the Greens mm -hmm. and recognise um, the member, Adam Marshall, um, for introducing this petition and also the mayors and the guests that are here today from that, the Hunter New England region. And as the member for Ballina, um, we share a lot of your concerns in, in, gen in general sense, but I want to say at the outset, particularly with the health minister here, um, just to say that, you know, a huge shout out to all, um, all, all of our health staff in, in, my, in the Ballina electorate, right across um, the primary health network and also our local health district, um, who've just done such an outstanding job over the last few years. In no way the things that I want to raise here during this petition debate are about them at all. Uh, Madam Speaker, um, I can't, I'm not going to speak to something like the splitting of the district, um, the Hunter New England Health District, because that's a matter for the community. However, in terms of directly employing doctors in emergency departments in rural regional district hospitals, we can certainly speak to that because my doctors uh, and nurses tell me that it is just incredibly hard because locums make so much money. Um, and so what are we doing to attract doctors to hard to staff areas? It reminds me as an ex-teacher of the sorts of incentives that we needed to do to attract teachers to hard to staff areas. And we're just not seeing enough being done to attract doctors um, and it, with the capacity to provide out, outpatient services. Um, and with uh, point three, dramatically increasing the number of nurses, Madam Speaker, I'm proud to be in a party where we have committed to introduce nurse to patient ratios to guarantee safety and better health outcomes for patients. And Madam Speaker, at the moment, my nurses are working alongside agency nurses who are, working, who are earning an extra $10 an hour. Now, of course, our nurses are not complaining about that because they're so exhausted and they're so glad because they're doing so much overtime that they don't really bat an eyelid about the fact that there's another tier of nurse staff who are earning more than them. And I think that that's unacceptable, uh, particularly after the incredible work that they've done through COVID. And Madam Speaker, when it comes to the response, I mean, it, is, it does boggle the mind that we have a national party member um, introducing this petition into the parliament today and it is a National Party uh, minister, the Minister for, Men for Regional Health, Bronnie Taylor, who has responded. I find that perplexing. Um, and also want to say that the $883 million investment that she has announced in response to this petition, Madam Speaker, if you take that $883 and spread it over 15 health districts, it's approximately $59 million. And you consider in just in the northern New South Wales health district, um, member for Lismore and I, has 12 health facilities. You're left with approximately $5 million per facility. Over four years, that's approximately $1.2 million a year. And I think that says it all because that is nothing. That is absolutely not fit for purpose, those kinds of figures. So we need, we need uh, the old parties to pledge some serious money as we move forward um, after this election, because it is the frontline workers who come to me and say, um, 
that they are just absolutely understaffed and overworked right across the health sector. And just recently, and I cannot leave without saying this, even though it's strictly not an, an area health district matter, but our AMBOs, why, Minister, if you could do something, the Minister for Health, if you could do something before you go to address, please, on their last moments, to can you please introduce the patient transfer system to regional New South Wales or the Northern Rivers? Because my AMBOs are being used, they are critical care workers, they're highly um, qualified professionals who are being taxi drivers taking patients to John Flynn and out of the area and with so few ambulances it is it's I lie awake at night because I think if someone has a heart attack in Alstonville while they are up at John Flynn let alone how long they have to wait before they can leave their patient who is not critically ill it is really not good enough and we want to see that reduced and let's please introduce the patient transfer system because we know that it's not just demoralising for our paramedics, but it is also extremely expensive. And I would love to know how much money we could save um, just in that sector alone. So commend the member and all those who signed, the 16,000 people who signed this petition, and let's do so much better for regional health moving forward. The question is that the House take note of the petition and oh, I'll go to this side of the House and I'll call the member for Tamworth. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, in 2005, New England Area Health Service merged with Hunter and became the Hunter New England Area Health Service Services, promising a range of improvements right across the board. It's been 17 years since Hunter New England Health was formed. And over that time, we've seen significant investment in facilities across, particularly, and I speak, not on behalf of any other electorate. I don't perceive to understand or know or control other electorates. I look after the Tamworth electorate, Madam Deputy Speaker. So I speak on behalf of the Tamworth community. I don't speak on behalf of other communities. I speak on behalf of the Tamworth community. So in relation to that, so the Tamworth Hospital, $211 million upgrade of the Tamworth Hospital in 2011, and you recall, Madam Speaker, you were there, $211 million of the Tamworth Hospital upgrade, $53 million promised for Gunnedah, and I notice we have mayors and general managers in the chamber, in the, uh, in the gallery today, $53 million for Gunnedah. We also opened new MPSs at Werris Creek, and I note that the member, uh, that the uh, the mayor of Liverpool Plain Shire Council, Doug Hawkins, is here today. And I also know that uh, up in Walker, and the mayor of Walker Shire Council, Eric Noakes, is here. There was a brand new Walker multi-purpose service. There was also an upgraded multi-purpose service which was announced by the now Federal Water Minister, Tanya Plibersek, when she was the Federal Health Minister back then for Manila, multi-purpose health service. So that's Manila. We also had Baraba upgraded as well. So we've had significant facility upgrades. What we are suffering with is workforce. Workforce continues to be a significant problem. And I know that the Regional Health Minister is acutely aware of the significant workforce shortages we suffer, not only in the Tamworth electorate and those areas that I spoke about, and, and uh, we've been working very closely uh, with the Liverpool Plain Shire Council. That's why I speak on behalf of them, because of Werris Creek being in the Tamworth electorate. So and I appreciate uh, the Mayor being here. We need to work hard on workforce shortages when it comes to nurses, clinicians, doctors. We need to get better at providing opportunities for them to come to regional New South Wales, to come to the Tamworth electorate, recruit and retain. So in terms of what the Regional Health Minister is looking at, 883 million incentives package announced in the 22-23 budget will help this. The package aims to attract and retain staff in rural and regional New South Wales by transforming the way health clinicians are incentivised to work in the bush. And already the district has identified well over 1,500 positions that are, that are eligible for incentives. 
and work will soon start on shifting that workforce recruitment and retention. Extending the scope of pharmacists, so when it comes to healthcare, you talk about health services close to home. And when you think about providing those services close to home, in the Tamworth Hospital, I call it the Tamworth Base Hospital, it's actually the Rural Referral Hospital, and I know people in Tamworth are watching this, and I'll get belted when I get home, because I keep calling it the Tamworth Base. For me, it's the base. And the services, the people, the staff, that are offered the cancer centre there. Uh, you've got um, radiology and, and diagnostic treatments there that are first class anywhere in the world, available in Tamworth. And the staff do a magnificent job. They need support. They need to know that there is hope on the horizon. Things like accommodation, for example, the pods being built at Tamworth Hospital to help with nursing. I know there's a couple of million dollars being put into the old nurse nurses quarters to upgrade that as well. The pods at Gunnedah Hospital on the back of a $53 million hospital upgrade there. So I welcome a review of Hunter New England Health, the 17 years that it's been uh, in operation, to check and make sure, check the pulse of the Hunter New England Health Area Health Service to make sure that it is delivering for our people, delivering the services that we need closer to home, making sure that it, addre it is addressing the workforce shortages, the clinical networks and pathways that are so important to our people. I welcome a review and I look forward to contributing to that review and making a valuable contribution in relation <coughs> to providing the very best health care to our people in the Tamworth electorate. The order, order. The question is that the House take note of the petition. I call the member for Kira and Shadow Minister. Seek leave to make a contribution. The member for Kira is seeking leave to make a contribution. Is leave granted? Yes. Leave is granted. You have the call. Uh, thank you, um, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, this is an important issue and one that uh, I think a lot of members in this place feel very, very strongly about uh, on both sides. And I want to acknowledge the member for Northern Tablelands, um, a former cabinet minister, and it, it is pretty alarming that on the final day a, cab a former cabinet minister would bring this uh, petition. I think it shows a health system that is under enormous pressure. Now, I want to say from the outset that uh, the frontline healthcare workers, the allied healthcare workers, the clinicians, the nurses and midwives, um, our security staff, our cleaners, um, do an incredibly important and fabulous job. Uh, it's been acknowledged earlier by the Minister and it, it's important that we acknowledge that on our side. I get a incredibly great feedback um, from members from my side uh, who, who represent that area. Um, the, the people like the member for Lismore, um, is, is a tireless advocate for people uh, in, in, in the northern areas, uh, the member for Maitland and of course the member for Port Stephens and my other colleagues that the staff do an incredibly, incredibly important and very, very good work. But the health inquiry that I fought hard to establish can't be ignored by a future parliament. It can't be ignored if we're on that side and it can't be ignored if we're on this side. Mm -hmm. It's an inquiry that was landmark in nature. It shone a light onto an area of our health system that probably didn't have enough light on it for a long period of time. I'm not going to sit here and say that previous Labor governments did everything well. I'm, I'm not going to say that. But I do think this government should have done better after 12 years. And I think the focus going forward on the next parliament and on the next government is one that has to focus on what happens inside our hospitals, not just on the buildings and opening of new facilities. No one expects people to work in chicken pens, but we've got to start to focus on the men and women who deliver the health care to the patients and communities that we are very, very, very proud to represent and support. That's why I note that the, the member for the Upper Hunter said, we haven't got any policies. Well, we've announced a commitment around safe staffing levels that is very, very important for MPSs that is very, very important for EDs. It's not a silver bullet, but it is an additional 1,200 staff delivered through mandated, mandated performance of staff 
to patients starting in those areas. We haven't said, we haven't said that that is a silver bullet, but it is a start in a change in the way in which we believe, believe healthcare needs to be delivered. We've also committed to an additional 500 paramedics on top of what the government's announced, targeted exclusively for rural and regional areas. And we want to increase their level of training because what we do know from the Rural and Regional Health Inquiry and what we do know from the Health Services Union is paramedics can do more. Paramedics can do more. They can assist in care at the home. They can assist in trying to keep people out of our hospitals, which I agree with, with the Minister. All of us, all of us have to try and do that. All of us have to work towards that. And yes, GPs are an issue, and there's no two ways about that. And I've said from the very beginning, I've already had those discussions with Minister Butler. I know that the Minister Hazard has had those discussions. Just a fortnight or so ago, I wrote to Minister Butler and said it wouldn't be a good move for the federal government to pull funding at this time from the states. So I'm not saying that this is all loaded up to one area. But what I am saying is this. After 12 years, we shouldn't be in this position. And what we've got to do and make a commitment to those people up there who represent communities right across rural and regional New South Wales, that the next parliament and the next government puts this issue front and centre. We want to make sure that New South Wales Health understand that this is a priority and that the, the, delivery of health care, the delivery of health services is more than just new buildings. It's about making sure when you go to hospital, there's adequate staff, making sure that the state and Commonwealth governments, regardless of their colour, are working together to make sure primary health care is working. And it's making sure that our paramedics are there to do what they need to do and not waiting through ramping that others uh, have talked about. That's going to be a focus of ours, and I hope that's a focus of everyone in this place. Yeah, yeah. Speaker. Mm -hmm. Madam Speaker, I seek leave to make a contribution to the debate, please. Uh, so the question is that House take note of the petition. The member for Maitland is seeking leave to make a contribution. Is leave granted? Yeah. Leave is granted. Yep. And I thank you very much, uh, Member for Northern Tablelands. And I know you know I have a very deep personal interest in this issue. And I acknowledge the mayors who've come up from that because I have probably a unique perspective in this, having uh, had babies even and lived in both the New England and the Hunter. And I had my son uh, in 1999 in Armidale Hospital. And I was very lucky at that time that there was an obstetrician in that place because I had a one in 10,000 birth event that could have killed me, could have killed my child. But the resourcing that was there for that hospital at that time enabled me to have that birth safely. And that is what women and men and families across this state want. And I know that your situation now is not like that. You don't have a hospital at... at um, Walker, you've got an NPS. I was able to go back to Walker to have um, aftercare after I had that delivery and be close to my family to have that support around me. And that was really important to me um, and to my family and to start making those important steps. But I, I live in the Hunter now in Maitland and we have a beautiful, great hospital. And I thank the minister for um, waking us the minister there for um, the work that we did to keep that fully public but we have not got enough staff. And the Minister for Regional Health has not kept the promise of keeping that staffing at a level which will ensure that we have doctors and nurses and midwives and health professionals across it. I've got a friend who lives in Gyra who had a baby recently and I was so concerned because there were some complications that they would have that, try to have the baby up there because of the lack of resourcing. It is a safety issue. I was concerned for that woman's life. That should not be a situation in our health system. But can I say to you, there are people in my electorate, I've had a case of someone having to wait for 100 hours on a gurney in ED at Maitland Hospital, and they didn't go from there to the GP because, you know, we hear from that side all the time, it's just a shortage of GPs in the area. In fact, the member for Upper Hunter, I think that's the first time I've heard him speak on health. I oh, know yesterday he said his hospital's perfect, but today, for you, he says there's some problems and it's all about the federal government. Well, that person who waited in Maitland Hospital for 100 hours didn't go home to their GP. They didn't go home. They didn't go to another ward. They went to ICU. If you're an ED 
and, and you go to ICU, you never needed a GP, you actually needed proper health care. And the problem is, and I've said this to some of you, your councillors in your areas when I've been up on visits to your area, my concern is, and it's a really genuine one, there's a bucket of money at the moment in, in Hunter New England Health, and like, if you guys secede from the nation, so to speak, you just might get a smaller bucket. And I don't know where they then escalate you to. Like, I have actually experienced a lot of um, health issues in my time in this parliament, and to have to go to Sydney to get, um, you know, surgery is something that ha shouldn't happen when you live two hours away. I've had people come to me who had to travel from Foster or Tunkurri to get a mastectomy in a John Hunter. Like, that shouldn't be the case. We should be resourcing these hospitals and these services so that people can get it. My mother-in-law has, uh, has a cousin who died because she didn't seek cancer treatment because it was just too hard to get. The tyranny of distance in rural health is too much of a burden and it shouldn't be kept by you people. Like your, your community shouldn't have to carry that load alone. And I think under the current regional health minister, that's what's happening. I've been trying to get meetings. We had a brand new hospital open in February this year and immediately an increase in 10 per cent presentations. The member for Port Stephens has people from her electorate now coming to Maitland and there was no, not one commensurate increase in staff. Now, through the advocacy of Labor members of parliament, and I know the member for Upper Hunter has people who go to that hospital, but I don't hear him complaining about this, but we have been working to get extra staff. And when you have a look at the job ads that go out, if you're a registered nurse who's working your guts out on your second double shift or third or fourth double shift that week, and they're sending very junior people who are only there for very temporary periods to support you in your job, that's no help. This Minister for Regional Health has to step up. The member for Kira, the Shadow Minister is right. We can't let the Rural Health Inquiry die on the shelf yes, under this government. Order. Um, I'll call the member for Wagga Wagga. Are, are you, you have to seek leave. Uh, the member for Wagga Wagga is seeking leave to make a contribution. Is leave granted? Yes. Member for Wagga Wagga has the call. Order. <laughs> Order. Member for Wagga Wagga has the call. Minister, I think you're already on some calls, aren't you, today? Are you on a call today already? Uh, no. Okay, you're on a call. <laughs> Yes, you have. You've got the first one. You've got one. <laughs> order, Madam, order. Madam, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, order. The member for Wagga Wagga has the call. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. And I, I rise to make a contribution in relation to the take note debate of this petition. I want to thank the member for Northern Tablelands for bringing this petition and the members of his community who are here today. And my interest in this stems from the fact that I think it illustrates two key principles around rural health. And the first is that for health services to thrive in rural and regional communities, they need to take control of their own destiny and not be dictated to by metropolitan cities. And I'm talking about training, and I'm talking about the second principle, which is they have to have service models, and you're talking about the employment of doctors, but it also applies to the employment of other health professionals. They have to have service models that are fit for their communities. Now, there's a lot of talk about the value of hub and spoke models. Uh, and I can tell you, life is good in the hub and spoke model when you're in the hub. But I can tell you, if you're out on the rim of the wheel, it's not so good. In fact, it's usually a pretty rough ride. And uh, for 30 years I've worked in regional health, and I've got to say that maintaining health services in regional New South Wales is a battle. Uh, growing them is, is like a war. Uh, and it's not just a battle against the government bureaucracy. Uh, it's a battle against a metropolitan culture. It's a culture that says that the best health care is big city, big hospital health care. And don't you worry about things in the regions. We'll give you what you need. Don't you worry about it. Of course, what happens is the funding, the power and the control stays in the city. As soon as there's a cut to services, uh, a cut to budgets, what gets cut? the services in the rural and regional areas, the services on the rim. Now, I've had some personal experience with this. I've worked in the bureaucracy, I have to say. 
Many people point to the health services in Wagga Wagga and say those services are good, and they are good, but they're good because the community has fought hard for those services over many, many years. And I know many community members there, both in the health profession and outside it, who've worked tirelessly. And I know the people in this gallery are working tirelessly for their services because it's rural and regional leadership that's the key to this. And I have to say that over those years, many times, it's been despite the government. And I'm talking about governments of both political persuasions. Why does it have to be the case? Why does this have to be the case? Uh, but I have to acknowledge credit where credit is due. The current government has appointed a rural health minister and they do have a rural health division. I think it should be a department, but at least a division is a step forward. And I think in that there is a recognition and the opposition spokesman for health pointed to the rural and regional inquiry. It has pointed out that more needs to be done in rural and regional New South Wales. And I actually think that as soon as we get the mindset that shifts, that you can run rural health from the city, and of course the Hunt of New England was based on that model, that by creating this link to, between the from rural area and the city, that somehow that would improve the service. And I, I think it's pretty clear that when you're out in one part of that, the rural part of that, that hasn't been the case. So I just want to make a very firm point. After many, many years in regional and rural health, I have developed the firm conviction that for rural and regional health services to thrive, they have to take control of their own destiny. They need to be responsible for the training of their health services, and they need to be responsible for the service models in those areas. I do have to acknowledge that the current government has provided funding to develop a health precinct in the Murrumbidgee region. That health precinct will explore research, workforce and service models in that region, by that region, for that region. And they've got runs on the board. The Murrumbidgee model of employing GPs in their training, that idea came out of the Murrumbidgee region. That is now being adopted by the federal government. It's the model, a similar model, that should be adopted, I would suggest, in Hunter New England, or should I say, the future New England area health service. <laughs> and the point I want to make about the Murrumbidgee model, it's not to own it so much as the Murrumbidgee model, and it's supported by the government, credit to the government where it's due, the point I want to make about that is that that model arose in the regions. And so I think, Order. Order. Uh, I think it's an important principle here about regional and rural control of health services. I think we're seeing a shift to that. I give the government credit for that. We are seeing a shift to that. I think this petition highlights the importance of that going forward. Thank you very much. Thank the member for Wagga Wagga. Member Port Stevens. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I seek leave to make a contribution the to the debate, a short contribution. Order, order. Uh, is leave granted? Yeah. Leave is granted. You have the call. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thanks to the members for their consideration. Um, I want to acknowledge the leaders from the communities affected by the petition that's been brought by the member for Northern Tablelands today. I want to thank the 16,000 petition petitioners as well and acknowledge their contribution to bringing this important issue to this House. Um, I have one message that I want to share with the petitioners and with the leaders in the House today, that it doesn't matter where you live in Hunter New England Health District, you still do not get the services that you need. So I'm the member for Port Stephens. I represent a beautiful area just north of Newcastle where the LHD is based. But we still do not get the services that we need. And the member for Maitland has already outlined some of the issues that are affecting my community with a new hospital that's been built in Maitland without the services or the, the staffing that's needed. And now you've got one in four people that are leaving the ED before they're even treated. And they are my people going to this new hospital, not being treated before they leave because they are waiting for so long to see anyone. That is one problem that's facing us right now. But the main problem that's facing us is our local hospital, our Tomaree Community Hospital, isn't even a hospital. It's not even an MPS. It's still managed by community and aged care, so it's not even under the hospital system. So we're, our nurses and doctors who are speaking to me are telling me that it's a ticking time bomb because we don't have any oversight of the hospital system. We don't have management resources and staffing of a hospital in something that's called Tomaree Community Hospital. It's a hospital in name only. 
And instead, I've got an auxiliary that raises funds to get the basics. Every bed, every mattress in that place has been paid for by our community through a Tomori Hospital Auxiliary. This is in Port Stephens, just at the very bottom of the health district that you have issues with. So I share the frustrations that have been brought to this chamber today. My community shares your community's frustrations, but just know that wherever you are within the health district, these issues are affecting the health, the access to health services. It's affecting people and their health outcomes. I've had a, I recently spoken to a gentleman who went to my local hospital, Tomari Community Hospital, and then when they said, because we have an emergency department, We've got an emergency department with four beds. I've got a ward with 14 beds. No doctor, often, in the entire place to be seen. And so ambulances bring people that need, in need of urgent care to a hospital. This gentleman arrives and they work out that this is way beyond their capacity. They haven't got the capacity to manage this gentleman's needs. So they call for an ambulance to take him to the John Hunter Hospital. It took nine hours, nine hours for an ambulance to arrive. For him, and when he, as soon as he, when he got to the John Hunter Hospital, he was immediately on the operating table and it only just saved his life. So that's why the health people in my district are saying it is a ticking time bomb because lives are genuinely at risk. And this is in Port Stephens. I imagine it's in the areas that you are talking about as well. Upper Hunter, we've got babies being had on the side of the road and you've got the member of the Upper Hunter telling this house yesterday that everything's perfect in his area. So we have got problems everywhere and that's, I, I thank you for raising this issue and putting an important spotlight on such an important issue. But after 12 long years, we have had enough of this government. The question is that the House takes order. That's very cruel, very cruel. The question uh, is the House take note of the petition. I call the Minister for Health in reply. Uh, thank you, Madam. Oh, sorry, uh, in response. Madam Deputy Secretary. <laughs> um, look, uh, I've got to say that, uh, first of all, thank you to the mayors and the community representatives for being here, um, and obviously for uh, uh, expressing uh, through the member for um, Northern Tablelands the concerns um, about uh, various aspects of the uh, health provision in the area. Um, I also want to say that uh, thank you actually to so many members who, who wanted to speak on the issue. So thank you to the member, obviously, yeah, MP for Lismore. I'm sorry I won't be here to hear any more. Um, MP for Lismore, MP for um, Upper Hutter, MP for Tamworth, MP for Kira, uh, for Maitland, for Port Stephens, for Wagga Wagga, and I think, yeah, for Ballina as well. It shows a level of interest in regional health uh, more broadly, even though it wasn't directly on the issues. Can I say I've been up to uh, the uh, Northern Tablelands, uh, or to, to up with the member for the Northern Tablelands before I was um, demoted to simply being the minister. Um, and uh, now, of course, it's the regional health minister that's been up there quite a bit uh, and working very hard with the honourable member. But I do recollect some of these issues that have been raised by the honourable member over a number of, uh, well, over an extended period of time, but also as a result of his advocacy, uh, we've got a lot of work that's been done up there so obviously there's the, uh, and I visited Glen Innes with him, uh, but there's the Glen Innes Hospital Redevelopment for $50 million. There's the Moree Hospital Redevelopment kicking off very soon, $80 million. There's a Glen Innes Ambulance Station, um, and that's underway. There's the Armadale Ambulance Station. There's the Inverell Hospital Redevelopment, which uh, was completed in, uh, I think, uh, 2021, wasn't it? 2021. Um, and I think the issue for us is, is very challenging in regional areas, and I know it's... Um, it's easy for the opposition, and I don't think this is what the member for the Northern Tablelands is saying, but it's easy for the opposition to just jump up and down and say, oh, it's, everything's terrible. Well, actually, it's not terrible, but there are services that are challenged in regional areas. Uh, the Hunter, Hunter um, uh, Local Health District actually uh, has a budget of $2.7 billion. It's actually bigger than, uh, than the ACT, bigger than Tasmania, bigger than a whole lot of others, and it's the biggest in the state. The challenge for us is, how do we get doctors and staff into those areas? And certainly there was a meeting in uh, Wagga Wagga, the honourable member was at, what, about four years ago, I think, three or four years ago, and we put to the federal government that we needed to have a joint model, a required amendment under section 19 of the federal legislation. Now it's the Murrumbidgee model, um, where doctors can be employed, they have a right of private practice, but they can be employed by the hospital. That's a model that seems to be working, and it came out of that meeting down there in Wagga, and again in Dubbo. We're doing more on that. We'd like the federal government to actually assist us on that front, and certainly Mark Butler so far has 
been responsive, and we're hoping he'll be more responsive. Um, we're looking at trying to increase staff all over, all over the district. Um, and look, I understand the, the call for the splitting, but I also would say to people, be cautious, because the major hospital in, uh, in the Hunter um, does actually provide services and outreach to some of these uh, smaller hospitals, and it's important that you, know, you can't just ask specialists at a, a particularly high level to stop or to, to work in a very small hospital, because they won't. I, we experienced that personally in my role as a health minister. It's a very challenging situation. So I would just say to people that uh, don't, don't necessarily, I mean, I understand that, that this petition makes it very clear that people are concerned, but that might not be the best solution. And I can tell you that uh, Minister Taylor and I have been in deep discussion trying to resolve exactly how the best, the best way forward is. And we are very conscious of the community's concerns. I finally want to say this, I want to thank the health staff as well that was already done, but the health staff in the district have worked under massive pressure, particularly during COVID. And I also want to thank uh, the management, Michael DiRenzo, and to say to him, thank you for the work you are doing, but we'll continue to work together to try and address the issues that are being raised by the member for Northern Tableland and the petitioners of the local area, and hopefully we'll be able to find a better way forward. Thank you to the minister. The question is that a house take note of the petition. Uh, and yeah, I, I called the member from the Northern Table yeah, Lands in reply. Of seeking leave. No, uh, th <laughs> thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Look, I sincerely, order, order. I sincerely, I sincerely <laughs> want to thank uh, every member of this House that's participated in the genuine way in which they've participated, and and particularly to acknowledge the Health Minister and the Shadow Minister, because in a lot of these debates, usually the parliamentary secretaries get dispatched down to actually make these contributions, and the Shadow Pal six. But in this instance, we've actually had the Health Minister and the Shadow Health Minister participate in the debate, which I think says to all of the petitioners in our region and our community leaders what an important topic this is for every single person, either side of the House in this chamber. There are challenges that we know, we know that, and this petition has never been about this is the silver bullet. It's about putting forward some sensible uh, reforms and changes which can be implemented to make a difference. And I know that the government will not uh, split the Hunter New England Health District, but that is something that I will continue to maintain as the local member on behalf of my community in this parliament and hopefully the next. But the critical thing that I take out of this debate uh, and what this petition has achieved for our region is an agreement from the regional health minister and the health minister uh, that we will implement the Murrumbidgee model in our particular part of the world. We will have, if the Commonwealth sign off on those exemptions of section 19, subsection two of the Health Insurance Act 1973, we will directly employ GPs within our rural hospitals in our region, which gives people the assurance that when they go to the emergency department, there is a doctor there to see them, to triage them, to, treat, to help them, rather than just simply having that hospital on bypass to go to Armadale or down to the member for Tamworth's electorate to Tamworth. That is, that is something crucial and fundamental that we've never had in our region, that, that this petition has helped bring about because of the combined pressure of people power and a common sense argument and a model that works because it's been demonstrated that it works in another part of the state. Again, thank you so much to everyone. Thank you to all our healthcare workers. You do a terrific job. And while we've got a, a win, a big win out of this, um, the, the, the battle continues to improve our health services and I'm prepared to work with the community to keep getting that done. Thank I thank you. the member for Northern Tablelands. The question is that the House take note of the petition. I'll put the question, all of that opinion say aye. Aye. To the contrary note, the ayes have it, the ayes have it.